Stay tuned. Ahead, we'll talk about the book, Too Much Trash, How Litter is Hurting Animals. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Joan Marie Gallat is an award-winning author of over 25 books for children and adults. Her previous books include Make Your Mark, Make a Difference. And she's also written books for National Geographic kids, including Cats and Solve This. Her many other books include explorations of astronomy, ancient myths and legends, history and nature, through both fiction and nonfiction. And she joins us to talk about Too Much Trash, How Litter is Hurting Animals. Joan, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, tell us about what age group this book, Too Much Trash, is aimed toward. Too Much Trash is aimed for ages 9 to 12. I think you would describe it as a book that's high interest. It doesn't really matter how old you are if the information is new to you, but the reading level would be appropriate for ages 9 to 12. So describe this book for us. What are readers going to find here? Uh, Too Much Trash, How Litter is Hurting Animals is is a book for kids who care about animals, um, not just not just wildlife or pets, but farm animals, any, any kind of animals. Um, you know, we have our, we have our, you know, natural habitat, but we also have animals that live in urban and rural environments. And this book covers all of them, how animals are impacted by trash, whether that's litter, plastics in the ocean, whether it's garbage that people have deliberately dumped or, or, or something that blew out the window. Uh, It just talks about how litter impacts animals. In the book, you break down different types of litter and and trash. So tell us a little more about kind of the scope that you cover in this book and the ways in which kids can help deal with it. So, well, trash is is anything that's not where it belongs, whether it's, uh, you know, plastics in the ocean or candy wrappers on the ground. There's a lot of things that people can do to help with this problem. First of all, is just before anything becomes garbage is to reduce your garbage. Um, the experts say we create about, I think it's 1.7 pounds of garbage each every single day. And so we can look at our lives and how, how much we generate. Could we choose products that use less packaging? Could we not just recycle packaging, but maybe um, use it in different ways? Upcycling is a way of taking taking objects and making them more valuable than they were before. So um, some people, instead of buying craft supplies, they might, they might look in the recycle bin and say, okay, what can I make out of these lids and these, these cardboard pieces and and different things like that? Of course, there's garbage pickups. There's uh, that's what got me interested in this whole topic at the beginning was I was part of a 4-H cleanup along a highway when I was a child and uh, seeing that vast amount of litter uh, never left me, you know, how, how is, how is there so much in the ditches along the side of the roads? So um, people are using engineering to solve litter problems. There's machines and robots in the oceans that are picking up litter. But I mean, these, these are all great attempts. But if we can reduce the litter, you know, reduce our trash before it becomes at risk of becoming litter, that's a really good first step. And you point out that that litter often lasts much longer than people think. In fact, I was surprised to learn that depending on weather conditions, like a a cigarette butt could last 25 years. It's alarming how long um, all of this trash in the environment can last. You know, if you think of a a cup you use for a soda, it's plastic coated so that it doesn't disintegrate in your hand. But that, you know, that feature for us becomes... Now this, this something that would have just maybe been ordinary cardboard is going to last so much longer in nature. And if it depends on sun, if that, you know, if that object's in the shade, yeah, it can last a long time. And microbes and bacteria that, and earthworms, you know, they can't break that down. And you point out that there are some forms of waste that people might think, well, it's not that harmful. For example, food. But... For animals that get into that food, it's not healthy for them. They may have other reactions to it. So it's not as harmless as you might think. That's right. If you, you know, you might have a, you and I eat a banana and think, well, what's the harm in throwing this banana peel out the window? And there's a couple of reasons why that's a problem. For one reason is if an animal decides to investigate that and, and see if it's food, now they're coming close to the road where they might be hit by a vehicle. 
if you live in an area where bananas are not naturally growing, then the animals around you are not adapted to eating that food and digesting it. Same with apple cores or you know anything that's not actually growing in your area. So they're not adapted to that. And then thirdly, as that you know, supposedly biodegradable object starts to disintegrate, it's probably attracting molds and, uh, and bacteria. And so it's really not as a healthy choice for an animal to ingest. Another thing that I think was good to be reminded of, often we see footage and hear about how waste in the ocean uh, can cause problems for turtles or fish or other things. But you point out that also it poses problems for land mammals too, that they can get caught up in different types of waste that can endanger their lives or in some place end up causing the the end of their life. Exactly. Um, as I researched the book, I, I found a lot of surprising things as well. You know, we if you if you drive past a farm, you often see old cars that aren't being used anymore, just parked, parked, and often there's car batteries and things that attract animals. And the you know goats will eat eat rubber, they'll eat all kinds of things like windshield wipers and things. And so that is actually that is actually litter and garbage that animals are ingesting. I read a terribly sad story about uh, a prized racehorse that that was frightened by a, a plastic bag that just happened to blow by and, you know, it, it was bad timing. It, it caused the horse to bolt and injure itself and it had to be put down because of a piece of litter. And it's, it's just so preventable. That's the important thing to remember here is that, you know, this is a problem that humans have caused. This is a problem that humans can solve and everybody can make a difference, whether that's educating others or taking part in a cleanup or trying to reduce your own waste. I'm talking with Joan Marie Gallat about too much trash, how litter is hurting animals, and our conversation continues in a moment. If you appreciate this discussion, please subscribe and hit the like button. And thank you. So, as you point out, there's a preventative factor and then don't create the litter in the first place. But then there's also the effort that kids and adults can be involved with in in picking up that litter and cleaning up the litter. And you have a a fix the problem section of the book where you talk about a number of things that people can do. You can physically go out and try to pick up the litter, but maybe you could write letters or basically become an activist to be uh, someone who's fighting against litter. Tell us a little bit more about that section of the book and what people can do. I definitely wanted to deliver some optimism in the book. You know, it's it's terribly sad how how animals respond to litter. I, I have my own personal garbage picker here. If I go out for a walk, I might pick some things up and uh, dispose of them properly. But yeah, kids can get involved, and kids have done some really encouraging things. There's some um, a couple of girls who came together and started a group called Kids Against Plastic, and they started a program that led to reduction of plastic use in schools. And I think it's, I think it's gone on to spread to about 900 different schools. <laughs> so there's, there's people who are called ploggers. They, they pick litter while jogging and they, they work in doing squats and different physical activities while picking garbage at the same time. There's just so many creative ways to make a difference. There's apps. There's one called Litterati where you take a photo of the trash before you pick it up. And then it records how many people around the world are making making a cleaner place. So there's a lot of creative ways to be involved, even just um, you know to make it playful. Have have a group of kids around, or adults. It's, it's not just for kids. Um, and say how much how much garbage can you pick up in five minutes? And then we're going to weigh it and and give somebody a prize and and just make it a habit of this is this is our world. We need to keep it clean. I, I found something very interesting in my travels. I was in Japan. And there are very few garbage cans there. You have litter. If you have if you have garbage, you have to take it home, and you don't see litter on the ground uh, very very rarely. So it's part of the culture to care for your community and to treat it as if it was your own home, which it is. And I just thought that was a beautiful thing. If we could, you know, if we could bring that to more places around the world, that that attitude and perspective, how beautiful it would be, and how great it would be for for our pets, our animals, and the wildlife. I wanted to come back to something you mentioned briefly, and that's some of the technology, which I thought was fascinating to see in the book. Uh, you have a, for example, some uh, kind of machine that they call Fred. 
Can you tell us a bit about it? Yes. Fred is a robotic that travels through the ocean and it gathers up litter. They are looking into having it um, make a pulse sound that will repel animals like um, seals and walruses, dolphins coming from coming too close to it. They want to make sure those pulses are not the same frequency that these animals use to communicate. And uh, yeah, th- these are great technologies for, for cleaning up our oceans. There's also Mr. Trash Wheel in the Chesapeake area that um, goes through a river and gathers up garbage. There's, um, there's sort of like floating platforms that pulse water through and the air bubbles are meant to lift plastics from the riverbed and bring them up to the surface where they can be collected. So there's all kinds of great engineering um, being explored to clean to clean our world. It's, an, it's exciting that there's, there's so many ways to solve problems and that people are using technology to make a difference. And at the end of the book, in the back matter, you have resources for kids who would like to learn more, or adults as well, and also a glossary so people can know what these terms mean. That's right. It's, it's a very inclusive book. It's, uh, it's published by Orca, and it's part of the Footprint series. So it, it offers children a lot of information. Once, once you learn about the topic, like words are bolded throughout, and you can go to the glossary, you can learn more about what that, what that word specifically means if the context isn't giving you enough information, and then you can go on to further reading. And, and the, the whole entire last chapter is about what you can do to help solve this problem, how you can be part of making a cleaner environment, which I was very happy to include it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's sad when you, when you finish a book and you want a little more and to know that there's resources that somebody has um, gone through for you, that can be very helpful. I think a lot of kids and adults love animals, and this is just another way that they can demonstrate that love by removing the waste that can cause a problem for those animals. And I think we've covered it in many ways, but what would you say are perhaps the, the insight that you hope that readers to this book will take away about that relationship between the litter in our world and the health of our animals? Well, I hope kids take away that it doesn't matter where you live, you you can contribute to solving this problem. Because even, um, you know, there, many people live in cities, but there's wildlife in cities as well. And there's also the risk to um, people's pets who are, you know, you've got your dog on the leash and the dog's pulling you because it smells something wonderful to the dog and it turns out to be litter. And that that can just be very dangerous, you know, animals that eat chewing gum and things like that. So I want kids to understand that, um, you know, we're all responsible for the environment. And you might not be a litter bug yourself, but perhaps you can help others realize the importance of it. One of of the things that really captured my attention was um, burning garbage and how now you're turning your your land pollution into air pollution. It's there's consequences, and that the toxins from that smoke might be coating berries or um, other parts of the habitat that animals are using. So it's really important to understand that um, your actions have consequences, but um, wise choices can really help the animals that you care about. Uh, Joan, in addition to the book, I understand that you are available to reach out to people if they happen to be close to you, maybe do a book club thing, but you could do it virtually as well. Tell us about the ways in which you're sort of personally reaching out to help people understand this topic beyond the book. Well, thanks for asking. I'm, I'm a public speaker. I love to go and visit schools and libraries or take part in events where I can talk about the topics in my books. Um, I also prevent virtually, so if a host wants to have me in and talk about my books and give kids a chance to ask questions about the topics or about the writing process, then I'm always welcome to invitations and people can find me through my website, joandalot.com. The book is Too Much Trash, A Litter is Hurting Animals by Joan Marie Gallot. Joan, thank you for talking with me today. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. If you'd like to purchase Too Much Trash, I've placed a link for you in the description below. And if you'd like to see more videos about children's books, be sure to visit the Kids Bookshelf channel. And here are links to two more of the many interviews you'll find there. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.